Welcome to the San Bernardino County Museum's Curator Blogs. My name is Damara Surya and I'm the Curator of Anthropology here at the museum. Today we're going to take a little tour around the world to see different types of rock art. In the presentation, I like to call Drawn on Stone. Rock art is an ancient art that was left behind by people tens of thousands of years ago and is sometimes the earliest and only trace of human existence around the globe. Our first destination is the south of France at some pretty famous caves called Lascaux. These cave paintings date to around 17,000 to 13,000 BC. And they're examples of pictographs. Pictographs are actually drawings or paintings on rock walls. Some of my favorite are these hand stencils. These handprints are actually the negative. So as you can see, there's no paint inside, but they painted around the outside. Now there's a lot of different theories about how this was done. The consensus is that hands were placed on walls and then pigment was blown out of a tube around to create this kind of orb. We can actually determine how many were women and how many were men, because usually women have the index and ring finger the same length. Men have a ring finger that's slightly longer. So this isn't exact, but it's a good tool that we use to determine who actually was making these handprints. These early pictographs are really prominent in this region. In northern Spain, in Santillana del Mar, we have a cave called La Cueva de Altamira. And this one was actually about 35,000 years old. Here you see the king and the queen of Spain looking up at the beautiful renditions of animals on the cave ceiling. And again, some more examples. This was on a wall. And here, what's fascinating to see is we have our very familiar handprints. We have four, I believe. So this begs the question, are these maker's marks? Was that their signature line? I love this artistic rendition of what a cave painter may have looked like. Here we have a woman, she has a baby and a small child. Uh, the use of light here is so important. I don't know if you've ever visited these caves, but it is really intimidating being in, there in the dark. And so just the sheer adrenaline going into these caves and having to paint these animals is incredible. Some people theorize that the ancient people went into these caves because they were sacred places, perhaps even similar to the womb of the Mother Earth. That's why some people believe the painters were women, the bringers of life. It was believed that animals actually came from the, the womb of the earth, which were these caves. And so they drew them coming out. And so perhaps only certain people were allowed inside. Would this fact actually change your opinion of why these were drawn here? Now, not all rock art is painted. We're gonna take a trip over here to Ireland, to Newgrange. These are examples of petroglyphs or carvings or inscriptions on rock. Now these differ from pictographs that are drawings. So these are actually etched in the surfaces of rock walls usually. Now Newgrange in County Meath is about 600 years older than the pyramids. And it's got this Triskeli-like pattern. What shapes do you see? Now, we know the function of Newgrange was actually to record the solstice. And so the solstice lined itself up within this tunnel, this passage that you see here, to create a, an arrow shape on the inner sanctum. So 
Having known that, maybe we can determine that these petroglyphs are maybe celestial events, maybe stars, maybe the cosmos. It's up to you to decide. Now we have tons of examples of both of these forms of rock art all over the world. We have Teso in Africa, Mongolia, Indonesia, North America, South America. And what about us? What about the US? Well, 48 of our states have rock art. Well, how about here in Southern California? We sure do. We actually have all types of rock art, even here in our county. Let's take a little tour of our area. Just for reference, there's a museum in Redlands, California. One of the more famous rock art sites is Black Canyon and Inscription Canyon, possibly Shoshone culture. And here's some examples of petroglyphs. There's a lot of different motifs here. You can spend days, months, years analyzing what each motif could be. The really cool thing is that you see these motifs all over, repeating. The bighorn sheep is really important, as many have hypothesized that petroglyphs, pictographs, were made as hunting magic. You want to draw a picture of the animal you are trying to hunt. Another example, slightly different, is an Aiken wash. This was probably Chemehuevi travelers um, that did this. But as you can see, they had pictographs and petroglyphs. Now this picture was used with a software called Destretch, and you actually add that to your camera and it stitches together the images and makes it a little bit easier for the human eye to see because many of these petroglyphs have been um, degrading over time. Now, of course, our neighbors also have quite a few notable sites, Indian Cave and Joshua Tree. I'm sure many of you have visited. On that note, I do want to mention, if you do ever come across rock art, please don't disturb it. Don't take flash photography. Don't touch it. It's really important since they're already exposed to the elements that we preserve them for the future. This picture was also created with D-Stretch. As you can see, the colors are really vibrant. We also have one of my personal favorites, which is at Santa Barbara County, the Chumash Painted Cave. Again, D-Stretch was used here so that you can see the motifs a little more vibrant, more clearly. And in Coso Range here, these petroglyphs are on the side of a dry riverbed, so we know there was life here. This is actually the largest concentration of rock art in North America. Do you think it was for hunting magic, for a successful hunt, or maybe shamans calling on good weather? Our third type of rock art are intaglios. These are the Blythe intaglios. Now these differ slightly from rock art in that these are much larger scale and they are actually engraved or carved on the earth's surface. I think many of you have probably heard of the hypothesis that these were to call on our alien overlords, but Many archaeologists believe that, perhaps not so much for aliens, but definitely as astronomical markers. The people who lived out in the desert and traveled depended on celestial events and the sun, the sun's movement across the sky, or rather our movement around the sun, to decide when was the appropriate times to travel, to hunt. And so we definitely can say that these intaglios were made for just that purpose. Perhaps they tell stories of the creator Mastambo and his evil twin. Maybe they were created for the enjoyment of the gods. Here's a closer look at one of the, the larger intaglios there. 
You can see they've built a fence so that it wouldn't be disturbed. But as you can see, again, these orbs, these spirals, indicate that it probably had to do with something celestial. Now there's some really famous intaglios in Peru, and these are called the Nazca Lines. One example is the monkey. It's a little difficult to see, but please feel free, if you check out Google Earth and type in Nazca Lines, you can actually explore them for yourself. But this is the monkey, you can see its head and its curvy tail there. These are large, large scale intaglios. And they're all over. So we have the Nazca Lines, we have the wheels in Saudi Arabia, we have the Mari Man in Australia. This one's gigantic. You can see the scale of the nearby canyon here. And just the scale of these are really impressive. As a museum and as researchers, sometimes we get more questions than answers, and that's okay. The biggest question surrounding all these examples is, what does it all mean? Let's look at some modern examples and see if we can draw a connection. Here's the famous bridge in Paris where people put locks on to commemorate their visit. I was here. This is a handprint actually on a train car. Here's an example of someone putting a sign, perhaps marking their territory or a traveling sign. Here's some historical graffiti or rock art. Now we definitely don't suggest marking up rock art or, or destructing sites like this. But it's interesting to think where people have been, people always want to be. So here, Ricky, Steve in the bottom left, Hamilton in the upper right, were they commemorating their visit? In 200 years, will archeologists wonder who Ricky 76 was? Many times we can use our own lives to reflect on what prehistoric people may have done. Keeping track of time, marking a sacred spot where the physical and supernatural world coalesce, marking territorial boundaries, Maybe a social forum, sites for ongoing dialogue. Maybe all these reasons that we mark up places are the reasons prehistoric people marked up places. We mark for many reasons. We are finding a way to communicate. Every piece of art has an artist with a message. Here's some modern rock art. I believe that we aren't that much different from our ancestors. Trying to determine what these glyphs mean is like trying to understand what this will mean a thousand years from now. Even we don't have all the context. What if all that was left of our society was this? What could we tell from it? Was it accurate? Was it for religious purpose? There's a joke in archeology span that when you don't know what something is, it must have been used for religious purposes. But we know the purpose does not begin and end with religion. Even just being separated from this piece of art, maybe by five years, we still don't know fully why they were marked. As contemporaries with this art, we can make some assumptions about what type of people group made this, but even we can be wrong. Who would ever assume that Prince William, Duke of Cambridge would be tagging? How much harder would it be for a researcher a thousand years in the future to determine the intent? I'll leave you with my hypothesis. We make rock art to make uninhabitable places more habitable. Think about it. Dark, cold caves would become a less scary place with some art on the walls. We do this in our homes. This alleyway was not a nice place to be, but now it's a place that's meant to be enjoyed. The art itself is reminding us of our history, of what has passed and the prayer to what we hope it will be. It's part of our humanness to inhabit, to communicate, and to create.